Being a social service sector, our hearts go to the families of the who lost their loved ones at the Tafaji building collapse in Lagos. And also, it is also gratifying to note that the one in Ibadan, no one died. Well, million Nigerians and indeed the wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, has been to visit with those hospitalized who are recovering and uh, condoled with the Lagos State, the people and uh, government of Lagos State for the unfortunate development. Well, it's a developing story as we go. On this side, we shall be looking at what steps have been taken so far. What happened? Did somebody compromise the process? Is it possible that something can be done about it because lives have been lost? Well, my guest is the President, Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, Engineer Kashim Ali. Thanks for joining me on Insight. Thank you very much. You have been about the media since the development in Itafaji and indeed Ibado. You have said so much, but the big question now is, with all this, what has Koren, maybe in sync or in collaboration with other regulatory bodies linked with this, we expect, we expect that the Standards Organization of Nigeria should do something and if other sister regulatory bodies. What have you guys done so far? Well, not much beyond advocacy, unfortunately. And the reason is clear. The responsibility for the actions that could permanently put a stop to this doesn't really rest with current or any of the regulators. It rests squarely with the state authorities because issues regarding to building plan approval and everything there on the concurrent list and then the so it has to be done by somebody taking responsibility at the level of the state government. The truth is, failures can occur anywhere in any aspect of human endeavor. You can have failure. But there are failures that will come after you have done your best. Then you now know this is an accident. But the terrible thing about our situation is that these failures that we experience are failures that have been uh, already projected to happen and actions have been recommended to avert them but there has really been no political will for people to do it. It's truly it's not easy to take down the building of any individual because that building could be the self person's source of income, it could be shelter, it could be everything, it could even be a, you know uh, an iconic structure for the family that represents the image of the family and everything. There's so much that people have around buildings. But when life is endangered, you just have to take an action. Because no matter how beautiful your building, how much it provides shelter for you, how much it also provides a source of income for you, if it comes down on you and kills you, all that is gone. The file is closed forever. So there's therefore the need for state governors really. I because I've heard in seen in the media attempts have been made to say these things were uh, marked and they have not been demolished. It's just like case of people who are in prison who have been convicted by the courts and they are not been executed. There has to be a warrant signed by the governor. Most of these organizations also need some authorization by government because by the governors because if you want anything that will bring a kind of unrest agitation amongst people you can't just as an official do it on your own you must inf the governor must give his assent okay. because there could be a backlash it could be social co political backlash that he has to deal with so if you can't take him by surprise so when these things are not done it's not because the officials are incapable of doing but because nobody has given them the the backing to do it. But it has come to a point we must cite examples as a way of, not as a way of spiting people, but encouraging them. Uh, you recall that Abuja was in some mess many years ago. When, the, when Erufai came as minister, he was confronted with this challenge. He could also have played a political game because he was an, a minister under a political system. In, in, in democracy, but he had to go and do the needful based on technical advice. Many structures were pulled down. 
Initially, t people thought heavens would fall, but heaven never fell. He was insulted. All kinds of names were uh, put on him. But today, the same people who insulted him, are they not hailing him? So if he didn't do what he did, you could have had some embarrassing situations in, in, uh, in Abuja. Believe you me, Accra Street was a typical example. The disaster that Accra Street would have brought on FCT to have been monumental. Because here were buildings sitting on sewer lines. Sewer line, the least of them was 600 mm diameter. So, and that was the, more than the depth of some foundations <laughs> that were sitting there. So if they, need to, if they went into it, they could uh, fracture the sewer, coll sewer collection would be uh, uh, disrupted. And it could bring an epidemic. So he has to rise to the, and do that. So my, the solution really lies with the governor, for instance, say, look, I'm ready to take the bull by the horn. I'm ready to face the backlash pull down all structures, not only in Lagos. There are all these things are in many cities in Nigeria. Uh, but Lagos, because of its coastal nature, is more, this, when rains come like this, uh, these things happen a, a lot easily. But other places, they also have their own... Uh, okay, we're all it. happy when we heard that the National Emergency Management Agency response team yeah. visited Ibadan just the following day after development and uh, the Oyo State Fiscal Planning Department was with them, yeah. Koren was there and some landlords yeah. and at the site or the scene of the collapsed uh, structure they came up with some resolutions and one of it was that the need for the, they ensure they challenged the federal government and governments across other levels that steps should be taken to avert future currents. Yeah. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah, okay. The, the story I told earlier will relate more to the Lagos case. The Ibadan case is the, that's the one that is most embarrassing because it's an ongoing uh, project. So, by all means, that one was not, it, had, it didn't need the governor. It needed just the officials of the government control or, or building uh, plan control in Oyo State to deal with that. Because a structure, for you to put up a structure, there are steps you need to take. And the steps have to be approved at every stage by public officials. And these are supposed to be professionals. So if they gave approval for anything, and that thing resulted in the kind of failure we had, it's, it's not acceptable. They will be as culpable as the person who did it. But if they didn't also give, and this person did, and then also the person becomes, but again, they cannot even uh, uh, remove themselves totally because, uh, as if you know uh, from experience, some individuals are given to craftiness and uh, it, it, it uh, manifests on projects in the way they handle their materials and even their human resources. So you should, from experience, be able to know that this person is capable of doing something unto us. If somebody brought a drawing to you in the first instance, and you had question mark on that drawing, on the account of the source of the drawing, and the person lies, that should raise a red flag. You should flag that individual and mark him every step of the way. You don't give such a person an opportunity to put you in a mess like they have, they are in now. Mm. Let's use the Ibado as an example. This is an ongoing project. Yeah. Now that calls to question the town planning unit, the fiscal planning unit, the executors. Can something be done to serve as deterrent? And I can be sure, somehow, somehow, your members are involved in all this. Can something be done to serve as deterrent? You know, interestingly. That is why I gave this uh, scenario. So yes. There's a complete understanding of the how it goes. Absolutely. You, uh, for now, investigation has not been completed, but the direction is going clearly indicates that they may not be involved. The fellow who have placed smart, sent his drawings, pretending it was done by qualified people, 
and it was not done. And even the uh, production pretend it being done by qualified people while it was not the case and this happened. But we'll get the truth. The tr truth is, I will be sure I always a bit thorough because you want to have everybody state his own case. Okay. Because at some time when you do it, uh, if it goes to court, they will say oh, there was no fair hearing. So only it's a bit thorough and we don't rush into it until it's complete. Okay. When the report came that the Lagos State Government has commenced the demolition of the structures mm. and uh, Yes, we, we, we love to use visuals in our reports. What we saw, we saw a man with a sledgehammer yeah. on top of the building during the demolition. Mm. The question one will ask is, was that professional? No, it's, it should We expected to see some heavy duty equipment doing it, but we saw somebody, a Lego, was that professional? No, you see, sometimes, not all the time, like when you have to deal with uh, high rises, we don't need to bring heavy duty immediately because if you bring an equipment because usually, if it's, not, if it's a standalone property, you can even cause an implosion and bring it down. But you have to do, take, make, take all measures to ensure that there's no vibration okay. in the manner that will cause damage to the foundation of other structures in the nearby. Okay. We know in fully why it's a legal that is coastal line. You know, any, any, or any attempt at creative vibration that will affect any building, the magnitude of the impact will be multiplied. Okay. So that will not be encouraged. But then you still need some light tools. For instance, when you go up, you don't need to... There are tools you can use to cut through concrete, to cut through uh, metal components. At least bring all those ones down. Then, depending on your, on that, on your study of the situation, you can do some light, you know, blow off some parts and then what else we can now bring them down with the equipment. What lessons for everybody? Because the public is involved, mm -hmm. the people are involved, the professionals are involved, everybody put together. Standards Organization of Nigeria is involved mm -hmm. because one, we should be asking what uh, did they use the required cement, did they use the required rods, who authorized the building, were engineers involved, what lesson? Okay, uh, again, I'll compartmentalize them. The Lagos, you know, they are entirely old buildings. And the uh, preliminary studies shows that it's the greed of the owners that created the problem we have now. Those buildings were not as tall as they are now when they were built. So there was some form of regulation mm -hmm. when they were built. But it's the greed that has made them to put additional floors on top of them without redesigning. For us, nothing is impossible. You can put anything. But somebody authorized them. It sometimes, that's why I said, sometimes they are. But the, the clandestine they could get it, the approval. But sometimes, most of the time, it gave the investigation has shown that most of the time, no. So only that the person who's supposed to know will turn a blind eye. In the, so that there's nothing documentary to say, say that you were given an approval. Okay, go and do it. If you get caught, I'm out. But what does the law say about such a development where somebody knows I'm not supposed to go beyond this level about this structure, but yeah. I go ahead. Are there no extant laws for this? Maybe no. to sanction people who do it. Oh, they but besides the fact that maybe people died, it's unfortunate. Yeah. But the landlord should be taken up as a deterrent to other members of the public who want to do the same thing. You should lose ownership of the of the property because you are not responsible enough to man because the land in the first place does not belong to you. Land perpetually belongs to government. It's rented it out to you to usually le leases usually for ninety nine years okay. and can be renewed thereafter. So it means it's not your property. And if I give you a property to manage and you abuse it, I should take it back. If that is done, it will send a, a strong message to people who do these things. That well, was done in, in, in Abuja. In, in, and that is one of the deterrents. In Abuja. You, if you, by any uh, rascality, get your house to collapse in Abuja, you lose the first thing, automatically you lose the land. Okay, before we, we, we wrap up this segment, let me just ask a simple question. 
they, like they will say, uh, regulatory agencies are not magicians. Yeah. It takes the uh, cooperation of the public for things to work. What can the public do to make your job easier, you the regulatory agencies? Just reach out to us. And the good thing about structures, they cannot be started and finished in one day. So you always have enough time to contact. Even if you, if you, if you don't even, you are not so sure of the status, you report. The professionals also have a very big blame in this. Yeah, no, even if, if I'm not a lawyer here in court, but well, clearly, if well, uh, if well, I come to you and I insist that you approve a building, and I know it is not correct, and I offer you money, you collect your proof. That is compromise. Yeah, no, those ones. You know, though if you, anybody does that and it's reported, he's done. Have you had cases like that? Unfortunately, no. But this is so serious that the person will lose his license. So that is why in most of these cases that have been investigated, they have not really been able to get any of them. Because you, they, what do you get? How much would the person give you compared to the punishment that could come if it, anything happens? Okay. So, so the, what they do, they always look for people who are not qualified to, gi to give them. Sometimes they falsify approval. They do all manners of things. Well, Engineer Kashim mm -hmm. Ali, President, Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. It was nice chatting with you on Insight. Thank you very much. And we believe that people will learn their lessons. We hope so. Okay. Up next on Insight is the interview segment. Stay with us.